Hey there, G3XE here, and today I'm doing Dungeon Workshop, and uh, going to be talking about how the three styles of play are actually married together and are one. I'm also going to be painting, uh, as I talk, a female drow ranger. Alright, so... Um, recently there's been a lot of awesome RPG videos going on for like RPG a day or, uh, and just other videos. Um, and there's been, I was seeing a bunch talking about old school RPG and kind of discussing, is it cool? Is it not? What's, what is old school? What, um, you know, uh, what isn't old school? And it got me thinking that really the discussion was not about old school versus new school, but was about... Um, the, the age old question of game, more like a game, right? So gamist simulation, more like a simulation. So simulationist or a narrative, more like a movie, um, and a narrativist, right? The, those are kind of the three styles and, you know, people will say, oh, this one's better. This one's better, but really you need all three. And that, those are actually, as I was thinking about it, are kind of married together. Because when people are making the point, especially in terms of like old school RPGs are uh, being good. When they're making the point that, oh, we need a little bit more simulation. Um, or we need a little bit more serious game consequences. There's, they're not whole cloth advocating for removal of narrative. They're saying that narrative is enhanced by having that um, element of danger in there. And no matter what D&D player you are, you like the narrative. Like, that's why you play is for the story. Now, whether or not you are, make, you know, story comes first type playing, or whether you value the stories that arise from having the chance in all these different simulation ways for your character to fail, and then that time that your character succeeds makes it all the better. Either way, everyone wants the narrative. So I see narrative as like the top of this thing, right? But the foundation is going to be game, simulation, then narrative. And that's how they're married together. So let me explain. Uh, I'll use wargaming as an example, as I like wargaming. You can't have a fun wargame if the sides are completely imbalanced. Um, which is why usually there's some sort of balance mechanic and uh, or agreement with your opponent about the points level you're going to play at. Now, <coughs> excuse me. Now, in real war, if we were to simulate that, it, that's violating the like one of the first tenets of Sun Tzu's Art of War that an even match, a 50-50 shot, is not worth battling. That you want to attack when you have the overwhelming advantage. Um, and you know, real war, they don't say, oh, okay, well, we'll bring this amount of tanks and this amount of whatever, and you bring that amount, and then we'll see who's better uh, at being a general or whatever. Um, of course, that's not how it works, right? So there's some element of game that comes first before the simulation. Because if we were just to purely simulate a battle that would, you know, uh, from like a pure, like we were actually trying to win a war tactics, or strategies, I should say, um, you would only attack when you have the overwhelming number, and that's not fun for the other player to roll dice to be like, oh, and maybe slightly outnumbered for a specific scenario and to fight against odds, but, like, if you if I have one unit of troops and you have 100 units of troops, and then you, you know, we play a game, it's not going to be fun, especially because you're going to be moving all your models, and I'm like, okay, I move, and then it's like, okay, I'm dead. So there's some element of game that comes first. Standing on that, though, is the simulation. So, rules that simulate reality help with the immersion, as well as give valid consequences. So, um, you need that game to have equal chances for everyone, but you need the simulation on top of it to provide a workspace, a play space, in which the decisions that each individual player makes will either put them forward or backward, right? It will help them succeed or fail. So you want it, a D&D &D, uh, game to have equality of opportunity. You, you don't want to say, okay, this person, this player is going to start with all the magical weapons, all, you know, he's level 20, and everyone else is going to start level 1 with nothing, and they're going to be naked in the woods. That's not fun. 
there's got to be some element of game. There's got to be some element of we're going to all start here. And there are certain rules that govern every one of us. But then comes in the situation, or simulation, excuse me, where if one player, if you know, is wanting to go into a goblin cave and saying, look, I'm going to pick up this piece of um, limestone or, or chalk or sandstone so I can scratch it along as we go so we don't get lost, and I'm also going to pick up these pebbles so I can throw them and trick the goblins, and I can also pick up this bag of flour, or, you know, have a bag of flour with me so that I can... Um, throw it, or sand, or something, throw it in their eyes. That type of thinking should be rewarded because it's simulation-wise would put them at the advantage versus I'm a naked level one guy and I'm going to walk in with nothing but a stick into the goblin thing and I expect to win because I'm the hero. Like, to a certain... You want simulation to come in there at that second tier to um, help people succeed or, or um, not... Um, so, you know, you get that. I'm, I made that point. And then finally comes in the narrative, and this is not in any order of importance, but in the order of a foundation, then a structure, and then the actual thing that you want to get to, which is the, that thing that all gamers want, which is the cool narrative. Now, the narrative's tied up in every step below it, because if we wanted a cool narrative, um... You know, the, the, why wouldn't you just say, okay, then my guy slays the dragon in a mighty thing. Like, that's what happens. Well, the DM would be like, wait, we haven't even gone to a dungeon. We haven't rolled any dice. Nothing's happened. What do you mean you just slay the dragon? Be like, well, that'd be a cool story. But you can't do that. You have to have game. You have to have everyone start out equal. You have to have a simulation in that you reward people working within the place, place, place space that you've created. Then will narrative emerge and um, whether you focus on that narrative and only have a little bit of the other two or whether you feel like you need a lot of the other two so that it makes each narrative bit count as count more they're all required so I think it's just an interesting point to that I actually and maybe you know if everyone has different perspectives I'd love to hear it but to me the diff the discussion about old school gaming versus new school gaming is just the same discussion that is found in almost every time when you talk about different RPGs and rules in RPGs which is are we going to be more narrative or are we going to be more simulation or are we going to be more of a game and I'm saying no these are all together and they're actually like a building there's there's you need all three and you need them as a foundation and you need them as your frame, and then you need all the bricks and paintings and furniture and everything else in your house of your tabletop RPG. Anyway, um, I hope that uh, you guys like that one, and I'll see you in the next video.